Is Nikon Z6, the first one, still a goodbye in 2021? Don't go anywhere, don't skip, and you'll hopefully find out. It feels really strange without having the camera actually in my hand, just because I'm recording with it. I don't have it in my hands. If you are here for the first time, my name is Path, and on this channel I talk about all things photography and video. If this is something that you are interested in, then please consider subscribing. I have bought my Nikon Z6 about a year and a half ago, and as I still use it on a daily basis, I couldn't really justify why I would need Z6 II yet. The truth is that this year I have put Z6 II in a basket on one or two sides with an intention of buying it. Every time before checking out, I ask myself this question. Do I really need it? I guess the answer is no, I don't, as I am still shooting with my Z6 and I'm still loving it. So what is actually stopping me from upgrading yet and why Z6 does for me what I do extremely well? In this video, I hopefully shed some light on why this camera is still a good buy in 2021 for a lot of people wanting to buy their first mirrorless or for anyone who wants to upgrade from a different brand or older DSLR cameras. Yes, the Z6 II has got dual card slots. I never needed two card slots. I don't shoot events or anything that I couldn't shoot again if something happened to my fans. And I always have more than one camera with me anyway. So in the worst case scenario, I'd have something in the can from other cameras. Also, when using any other camera with double card slots, I only use one card anyway. I guess it's important to have those two dual card slots if you want to photograph an alien abducting your neighbor, knowing that you're never gonna get another chance to do it again, and there is like 1% or less chance of your card failing and corrupting your files, in my opinion. Better autofocusing in low light, I mean, in no lights, yeah, I never shoot in really low or no light situations or with remote flash guns either when you have to pre-focus on your dark subject before the actual flash lights light it up. In fact, I find Z6 autofocusing 100% adequate and reliable for type of photography and video that I do. Also, as I am a Sony shooter with a7 III and a7S II in my kit, I actually prefer to film with my Nikon Z6 when I have to do heavy color grading, like in all my talking parts or videos on my channel, like, like this one. The grading change in color like this is so severe here that Sony's 8-bit file format struggles too much every time. When Z6's 10-bit and lock recorded onto Ninja 5 is perfectly manageable in this situation and any situation where I need to push the footage that little bit extra. Autofocusing video is more than good enough and responsive for this kind of work for me, as you can see, and it works for me well every single every single time. This also will be hugely dependent on the lens, and most of the time I use, like now, I use Sigma 50mm f1.4 art via FTZ adapter, and it is still this good. It does work very well. No problems. There's more to the whole Nikon Z6 ecosystem as well. If you already follow me here on my channel, you'd know that I review a lot of lenses regularly. And I do shoot with Fuji, Olympus, Lumix, and of course, Sony cameras all the time. But when it comes to my regular shooting for, for a living, on a daily basis, I always go for Nikon Z6 first. Sony autofocusing is the best without any doubt, but the RAW files and how I have to process them Aren't. I should often with both Sony a7 III and Nikon Z6 at the same time on the same jobs. And the amount of time I have to spend adjusting Sony files to even remotely resemble what Nikon gives me straight out of the box is huge. Nikon RAW files are just brighter, sharper and more vivid without doing anything to them. I have very little experience with Canons, but out of all other cameras and camera brands, only Lumix, Lumix S5 in my case, my experience comes close to what Nikon can produce. My Z6 gives me exactly what I need and for sure Z6 II would be no difference to me in that regard. If we talk about the price, the original Z6 right now in all configurations, but only with FTZ adapter or with the amazing 24 70mm f4 
kit lens is about 500 pounds or 500 dollars us dollars cheaper than z6 ii obviously the need for certain features will be different for different photographers or filmmakers but if you like me don't need two card slots or if you're not trying to focus on anything in pitch blackness then z6 ii is still a very strong camera right now when it comes to video z6 ii can do raw hdmi output to ninja 5 straight out the box which with z6 you have to pay extra and send the camera to be updated by nikon for me raw video output is not needed at all as i'm as i am more than happy with just analog recording raw files are huge for starters and for filming for web and youtube only not really needed and would make no difference to me or my paid customers well the file sizes would make a difference to me for sure but not in a good way also if raw video is something that you must have you would have to also buy atomos ninja 5 cables batteries and solid state drives to do so with z6 ii not cheap and instantly adds a lot to the final price so for sure for some people the new features of z z6 ii will definitely be must have but for me z6 one is still an amazing camera that fits perfectly into my everyday workflow what i really don't like about my z6 is the build quality it just doesn't feel and it isn't as robust build like nikon dslrs used to be and in fact other cameras from sony or, or lumix i have mine permanently in the smaller cage as i do both photography and video with it and i like the fact that i can kit it out when i need it easily and quickly but also the cage gives it a lot of all-round protection i have heard a lot of horror stories of the buttons falling out and the rubber input covers warping i guess i am so far lucky with those with mine but the edge of the rubber padding around the viewfinder has come a little bit loose and i can't push it back in not a biggie but considering that i have been shooting with my nikon dslrs for years and years without anything falling off or getting loose it shows that these are not made the same and are in fact made cheaply this is something certainly to consider uh, and have in mind when shopping for a second hand z6 it's not all about actuation count anymore but also if, if all the bits are on the camera firmly and nothing is loose or warped also important to consider when buying a new or new to you mirrorless nikon like z6 or z6 ii is the price of the lenses anything native nikon s line is going to cost you using ftz adapter opens more cheaper possibilities with all the f-man nikon sigma or tamron lenses but not all are compatible but what i really love about the new nikon z mount in general is that now you can adapt old vintage lenses and still get infinity focus unlike with nikon dslrs and you can get really good vintage lenses seriously cheap so when choosing your first nikon or upgrading from other brands or dslr camera you have to budget lenses into the cost of your camera in my opinion and in the kind of photography and video that i produce there is enough difference between the features of both versions of the camera for me to instantly sell my z6 and buy 500 pound or 500 dollars more expensive z6 ii it would make very little difference to me for sure or no difference so if you shoot weddings and the fear of the card corrupting your files is real and makes you lose your sleep every night a week before the shoot then z6 might not be for you not that it actually ever happened to me with just one card the chance of it is still very very small but i really think that this camera is still amazing choice in 2021 i'm certainly sticking with it for a bit longer as we me and my and my nikon have definitely something special going and so unless something happens to it touch wood or nikon brings all singing and dancing z63 that will make me a better photographer because it has a red shutter button maybe it will it can make me a coffee in the morning with its triple card slots i am staying with my z6 and this is it from me if you like this video please give me the thumbs up if you like this kind of content please consider subscribing and for more photos and videos from all of my reviews follow me on instagram check out my zeon smooth q3 smartphone gimbal giveaway running right now and thank you for watching and i'll see you next time i guess it's important to have dual card slots if you want to photograph an alien abducting abducting your neighbor knowing that you oh, uh, uh, panic panic uh,
and I've lost it. The gradient change in color here is just so severe that Sony 8 bit. Oh my god, you have to get up again. But, but, uh, it's so hot in here under the lights with curtains closed, windows closed, and the fan switch stuff that if I pass out halfway through this recording, it, it's because I've cooked and it's a wrap.